Good morning, Providence Park, and our God's richest blessings be to you again on this Lord's Day. We thank God for all that he's doing and still for just keeping us. We ask that you keep in your prayers, uh, numbers of bereaved families. Um, I have a note here from the um, Deacon Long and his wife, Mrs. Carol Long. It says, to my wonderful, caring church family, thank you for your many cards, calls, and other acts of kindness as we funeralize our sister-in-law, Sally Reeks Long of Tallahassee, Florida. God bless you all. Sincerely, uh, Deacon George and Sister Carol Long. Also, we have a, a note and we send a letter of thanks to Hunter B. Frischkorn III, who sent a check in honor of Demetra T. White uh, for $500. And so we'll be sending them a note just to thank them as well. We thank you for continuing to send your gifts and offerings as we, as we labor together. Uh, certainly, we invite persons to volunteer to be a part of our, our COVID committee for the cleaning and, and, uh, and, and keeping the sanitizing of the church. Not opening anytime soon, and so that's just uh, the numbers are dictating that. But we need your support, but certainly we need persons who would volunteer to help and assist uh, when that time comes. And so you can call the church at 329-1963 if you wish to volunteer or contact one of our, our, our deacons who are handling that. Again, we thank trustees Edgar Osbury and Richard Collins for our filming. And we just uh, give glory to God for a chance just to reach you. So on Sundays, our services are the list and only services at 11. The number is 1-701-802. 5243 and the access code is 759-1971 in pound. And certainly you can go on the website provincepark.org to view the service. And I'll call in prayer on Wednesdays from 6.30 to 6.45. Um, that number uh, you can find, uh, if you will, is 1720-650-3030. And the ID number is 176-2381. And pound. Uh, doing these lessons, I've been trying to just go back in my stacks uh, uh, for over 40 some years. I've been writing and looking at the text, probably 50 some years now, of finding things and studying. And so just to going in the, in the stack, just to find something meaningful for this occasion, some more recent lessons, some uh, earlier lessons, just to kind of prime you, just to focus you during this time. And so this was a little ditty that uh, I enjoyed and had a chance just to transcribe uh, last year. The thought is just being bought from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 through 20. And so if you can find that text as we just share together, I'm going to just pray and let's move us forward. Dear God, we pray now that you continue your blessings, dear Lord, upon those who have surrendered back loved ones, the, the long family, dear Lord. We surrender to your care, dear Lord, the Perkins family. We pray for healing, dear Lord, for Sister uh, Ms. Pace, dear Lord, for her touch and, and your care and your love in her life. And pray for others, dear Lord, that are needing your kindness and your care as we move along. We thank you for the cool breezes, dear Lord. We thank you, dear Lord, for the water that quenches our thirst. We thank you, dear Lord, for just providing your care for us as we share together. Be, dear Lord, with this nation, this state, be with this city, dear Lord. Help us, our part, to appreciate your grace and your goodness and your mercy that makes possible each moment that we enjoy. We thank you now, even in this lesson as we share together. We pray for your name's sake, O oh God. Amen. I want to consider this thought, if you will, being bored. Um, consider what it means to be bored. Now, in terms of chattel slavery, being bought signifies that someone has secured exclusive and comprehensive rights over you in regard to his property. In biblical terms, being bought signifies claim of ownership over another as a person with rights due to economic insolvency, as well as absolute claims over another due to conquest. So either you may uh, conquer a person and, and claim them as a slave or they are bought, or a person may get in debt and they owe some persons and they become, if you will, bought in those terms. Being bought means that someone has acquired you 
including your services, for some price that involved your relinquishing of self rights such that you are indebted to that one for your life. It means you have no freedom or rights that you can claim, regardless of the one who claims ownership over you. Being bought means you are obligated out of the debt that you owe your owner controller to comply with whatever she or he establishes. Now, who bought you? Who owns you? Who do you owe? Paul used the concept of being bought to explain the status of believers vis-a-vis -vis the Lord. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians 6, chapter. I'm going to start at verses 12 and go through 20. 1 Corinthians 6, chapter, verses 12 through 20. Our focal verses of 15a and then 16 through 20. He says, all things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be enslaved by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant for immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. 15a, that one of our key parts. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that he who joins himself to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For as it is written, the two shall become one flesh. But he who is united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun immorality. Every other sin which a man commits is outside the body, but the immoral man sins against his own body. Here are another key verses. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God? You are not your own. You were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. Being bought is Paul's metaphor for servitude to the Lord. Consider this. Being bought means you do not own yourself. The one who paid the price for your freedom calls all shots over your life. The one who made the down payment for your bond comprehensively controls your fate. That the Lord laid Jesus' life on the line for a sin sickened world. That the Lord spent Jesus as the cost of our redemption. That the Lord paid Jesus as the bond to get us out of the pawn shop of sin means that nobody except the Lord absolutely or rightfully owns anything. In other words, you cannot do what you want regardless of the Lord because He is your owner. He says, Do you not know? That your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God. You are not your own. You are bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. Being bought means you are enslaved to the one who bought you. There's a debt that you owe. There's no free ride. Nothing came out of your pocket. Everything came out of the pockets of the one who paid the price of your redemption. You had not a pocket or lint in it. You had not a pot or a window. That the Lord did what it took for you to live. That the Lord suffered a setback so that you could be solvent. That the Lord went into the blood red so that you could be in the black. Means that you own nothing. The Lord owns everything. And the price of your redemption is that you must serve the Lord. The one who bought you and owns you. It says you are not your own. You are bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. Now, it is tragic that many in our society are bored. There's flunkyism. Folks are given jobs for which they do not qualify, which they are not capable of doing, which they brown nose to get, and they work in this capacity at the mercy of their employers or the ones who hire and use them. There is slavery. Folks are regarded as property and are employed and serve at the whims of their employers. Worst of all, there is whoredom. Folks do whatever the purchasers, promoters, or pimps please and partner with whomever their purchasers, promoters, or pimps wish regardless of any consequences since they have to please their purchasers, promoters, or pimps. Look at our society today and consider who is bought. 
When this kind of behavior is embraced by saints, things go south quickly. Jeremiah, the Lord through Jeremiah, shares these words in Jeremiah 7. He says, will you steal, murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, burn incense to Baal, go after other gods that you have not known, and then come and stand before me in this house which is called by my name and say we are delivered, we are saved, only to go on doing all of these abominations? The Lord through Jeremiah says, has this house which is called by my name become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, I myself have seen it, says the Lord. As believers, we are made financially and politically solvent by means of the Lord who paid our debts or our bonds. We are freed of any guilt, consequent penalties, or punishment by means of the Lord who has acquitted us of our debts or guiltiness. As believers, we have been granted a new lease on life by means of the Lord who has absolved us of past negatives. It says, you are not your own. You were bought with a price. So glorify God in your bodies. We must glorify God. Paul said the Lord paid the price of our sins by means of the sacrifice of Jesus. The Lord absolved and thereby absorbed the punishment of violation of his commands by taking it out on Jesus. The Lord acquitted sinners of their sins. That is, those who received and believed Jesus as his redemption fee for their freedom. The Lord claims his own creation by means of his gracious redemption. In other words, the Lord re-embraces his own in spite of and in light of their rebellion to him, provided they accept his offer. We must glorify God. Paul, in that Romans passage in Romans 3, he says, Since all have sinned, fall short of the glory of God, then they are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forth as an expiation by his blood to be received by faith. He says, he justifies him who has faith in Jesus. To glorify God now is to act like his. Present yourselves as his representatives. Embrace his Torah and exemplify his covenant faithfulness. In Romans 5, he says, having been acquitted by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. He says later, for while we were morally weak, at the right moment, Christ still died for the ungodly. He says, why one would hardly die for a righteous man, but perhaps for a good man, one would dare even to die. But God demonstrated his love for us because while we were still sinners, Christ died on our behalf. Therefore, much more than being acquitted now by his blood, we will be saved through him from the wrath. He continues in 2 Corinthians 5, this beautiful passage. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Right then the new has come. And all these things are from God who has been reconciling us to himself through Christ and given to us the ministry of reconciliation. That's because God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself not accounting to them as transgressions as he established in us the word of reconciliation. He says, on behalf of Christ, we are working as ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. Bottom line, by means of Jesus, by embracing his belief and lifestyle, we are the Lord's slaves. Now, if we are the Lord's slaves, we cannot do what we want. And we cannot run things the way that we like. How dare you take God's breath and blow it away on frivolous living? How dare you take God's energy and waste it on partying and foolishness? How dare you take God's body and dog it in downright indecency? How dare you take God's money and do with it what you want, failing to realize that God gave you the strength to make it, God opened the doors so you could get it, and God created the whole world so that you could have it. I tell you, the devil lives by grace. And the Satan lives on borrowed time. The king who forgave the servant who did not forgive his fellow servants told the ungrateful and unforgiving servant, he says in Matthew 18, he says, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you besought me. And should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in his anger, the Lord delivered him to the jailers till he should pay all his debt. Well, let's get the record straight. We have this treasure in earthenware vessels, breakable vessels, such that they are extraordinary powers of God, and it's not from us. He says, in every way we are hard-pressed, 
but we're not crushed. Uncertain, but we're not despairing. We're persecuted, but not forsaken. We're knocked down, but we're not destroyed. Always carrying the crucifixion of Jesus in our bodies so that the life of Jesus might be manifested in our mortal flesh. Paul says, have this mind among yourselves. It's yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, didn't count equality with God or things to be grasped, but he emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. And that's why God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that's above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in the heavens and on earth and even under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Paul says, I advise you, brethren, because of the compassion of God, to offer your bodies a sacrifice, living, holy, pleasing to God. This is your logical act of worship. He says, don't be molded after this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind so that you may prove what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. Truth be told now, if it had not been the Lord, who was on our side when men rose up against us, they would have swallowed us up alive when their wrath was kindled against us. But blessed be the Lord who has not given us as prey to their teeth. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. Now since God is for us, since God is working on our behalf, then who can be against us? Well, if PhD, if doctor of philosophy means anything, it means praise him daily. I don't know about you, but I have a charge to keep and a God to glorify. Far be it from me to glory except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me in the life I now live in the flesh. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear on my body the box of Jesus. Brother, I do not think that I have made it my own, but forgetting those things that are behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the mark of the prize of the upward calling of God that's in Christ Jesus. For this gospel, I was appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher, and therefore I suffer as I do. But I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I'm sure that he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted unto me. I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all of God's creation is able to separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be firm, be fixed, always excelling in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labors in the Lord are never in vain. Oh, drops of grief can ne'er repay this debt of love that I owe. Here, Lord, I give myself away. It's all that I can do. It's at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. And the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith. I received my sight. And now I'm happy all the day. Now, if anybody should ask you just who I am, I want you to tell them that I am, that I am, I am risen. The doors of the Capital C Church are open. The arms of Providence Park will welcome you on this Lord's Sunday. Become a faithful member of some branch of God's family. You may call us at our church number, 329-1963, if you want to join us. But find some Baptist, uh, if you will, some gospel, Bible-based church and become a faithful member of some branch of God's family. We welcome you during this virtual reality. Still, you can be in touch with God. God is still blessing. God is still keeping. And the Lord owns you because he's paid the price for you. Let us just bow in prayer. Oh, Lord our God, we thank you for your grace, your goodness, and your kindness. 
We pray, God, that you refresh us with your spirit, that we'll be who you have created and consecrated and commissioned us to be. Bless us with your spirit wherever we are, the Lord, in our homes, and our work, and our jobs. Young, old, the Lord, we pray that you touch us, that we realize who we are and whose we are, and that we'll serve you where you have stationed us. In the name of Jesus, may a fresh blessing, a fresh anointing, be upon your saints on this day. We pray in Jesus' name. I give you my charge, loved ones. Heart search by the Spirit. Sacrifice self. Abide in Christ. Learn wisdom. Grow by the word. Preach the truth. Have mercy. Forgive 70 times 70. Stand with hope. Travel by prayer. Walk by faith. And live. Name of him who's able to keep you from falling. Yes, and to present you for his fall with exceeding joy. To him who paid the price of your and my redemption. To him we give glory and honor, and we bless you in his name. You the redeemed of the Lord. You ought to say so. God bless you on this Lord's day.